Welcome or oh, welcome back to Btide and in this video we are going to implement the EOS anti-cheat in our game which is now supported by EIK in version 3. The setup is not that difficult and you should be done in 5 to 10 minutes. The last part of the video is basically how we generate the files because you have to sign the files uh, with a dev auth tool so that it's usable for the players. Now one more thing that I would uh, like to tell you beforehand is uh, there is a bit of explanation that I do in the first two minutes that you're going to see now in a few seconds but if you don't want to get how this EOS backend works in terms of anti-cheat you can skip and move directly to the video. I think I wasted a few seconds on this explanation also but let's move on. Uh, EIK version 3.1 is just near uh, like releasing in two days. It has login methods that you ever wanted Google login, Apple login and not not and a hell lot of bug fixes and crash issues solved and most probably support for open id and consoles are also coming later this month that said uh yeah move on bye guys so let me explain uh what's the difference between the peer-to-peer -peer model and the client server model that uh eik that is us integration kit uses so in peer-to-peer -peer model no one has an authority over the game Basically, the clients will uh, check between themselves uh, if like the, the player in front of you is protected or not. Now, in front of you doesn't mean that he's standing in the game in front of you. That means if you have sent a message from client game client A to game client B, uh, then game client A will check if the client B is protected or not. And that it will report to the anti-cheat backend service. Same with the client, uh, with the third or the fourth client, they will check between each other and if they will tell the anti-cheat backend service that, hey, this is protected and yeah, I am also protected. Now, the second model is what we implemented in EIK and is a more simpler solution, is a listen server solution, is basically a client server model. Whereas like the server that is the person who hosted the session has a little bit control over the game clients. And um, in case of cheating, like if he wants to cheat, he can, uh, but that cheating would be like, he is not authorized on the anti-cheat portal, like uh, he did not register the clients and things like that. Uh, and that's a simpler solution, a simpler explanation for that. I would suggest looking out for the docs on uh, this. I will link these in the description, but basically there is an authoritative host, basically um, the host who server made that server will register the clients and will take actions on them as EOS suggests. So all the game, cl game clients will report back to the host. So whatever code we are going to implement, you will see the host. There are two uh, parts of those uh, codes. One is on the game mode and the second is on the player controller. The player controller code is the client code and the game mode code is the server code. So what will these, uh, this server tell the backend and even these game clients are responsible for telling the backend a few things and what they will tell. Now the only disadvantage with this is that the authoritative host has a little bit of uh, advantage over the game, but most of us won't mind that, at least not um, the game type of games I usually work with. But uh, if that's a problem, uh, you can reach out to us on Discord and we can provide you the, with the code for peer-to-peer uh, -peer mode, although we, that's not tested and will not be added to EIK in future too. Now, the at least that's what my plan is. <laughs> Sorry if that changes later. But the, one more thing is, even for dedicated server, this setups work, whatever we are going to do, because the host is, again, the dedicated server and whatever code is going to run is irrespective of the thing that that thing is a server or a client. So... So here we are going to use our own uh, game mode that we created in the last video. So let's open up the event begin play and we have to get the server module. As I said, all the code in the game mode will be the server modules and not anything else. Now you need to assign on anti cheat register client. This function will uh, like fire whenever EOS wants you to communicate a message to a controller. Now add a branch and we will just check uh, from this uh, get player controller we will check if the id of this thing is valid or not like of the server is valid or not so now usually the server will not have any id so we do not need to basically call this register uh, anti cheat with the client id 
so you can directly do it but, but in case of players you need to pass the client product id so which we will pass here get the epic product id and we will pass it now you can just make a print string if you want uh, and now because like uh, of course in the build you won't be able to see the logs directly so it's better that you add a print string so oh and i i mean we can see the logs by using the dash log but i will just uh said it's better to add print strings before on yeah now uh on here we will just cast to our player controller so that the controller player controller is the bp first person uh player controller so we will cast to it and if the cast is valid what we are going to do is we will communicate a message to him now we don't have a function for that of yet so we will just create a new function in the player controller and we will just name this server receive message and this should run on the server now this message will always be bytes um, like byte array so we, you can just select the byte here and then the type would be array and save now just call receive server message and pass in the message that the ei like us sdk asked you to forward next what we need to do is we just need to add an event on post login and then add a branch and check if the id of the player is valid or not now of course we have a function for that in eik and that's get user id which will like which i will just copy just so i don't have to press right -click. but now i will just uh, call get product user id and then i will call from get uh, server like i will just get the anti cheat server and then call register player register client for anti cheat yeah this one and just add it on true and pass the client product id now the controller reference is very important to pass so make sure you pass this because this will be passed to back end of the unreal engine now the windows platform you can choose whatever you want uh, like you can even replicate it and get it from the controller i am just making this quick video so i will just pass as windows now i will add received macro for that like i have registered the player next we need to create a new function uh, on the same graph itself and that's called uh, server oh basically receive message from client I've, i forgot this is a game but sorry receive message from client not the server i just messed up but it should be client and make it run on oh it's not required although yeah let's leave it and then we will just get the anti cheat server and then call receive message from the client and pass the controller reference and pass the message reference and that is it compile and save now if you want you can print uh, the return value but i don't need it as of now now you can also bind it uh, to a uh, assign on action required this event basically tells you when you want to kick a player and it will pass the true value if you have to remove a player and that you can bind in your chart i am not doing it as of now because i don't want to throw a lot of a session because anti cheat was not available but uh, if eos says you should do it now let's move on now we have to do a little bit of coding in the player controller also so in the player controller now on the event begin play as you can see we have some code here but i will just add a sequence here so that i can uh, write my own code now don't go about writing style i just have to create this video a little bit quicker so i can work on the plugin and that's why i am just do here and there but add a branch and check if the this code is going to be locally is like if this controller is local if it is then create another branch and check if anti cheat client is available if it is then get the uh, anti cheat client subsystem then call a function named assign uh, on send message to server this function is called from the eos backend with a message that you need to pass to the server and then the server will uh, take care of that so create a new custom event and call it a uh, server receive uh, sorry send message send message to server forward message to server and there should be a single entity that's a message now we can just call this function as of now receive me uh, forward message to server and this should run on the server and you don't need to make it reliable because e if it doesn't reach eos will make sure uh, you pass it again yeah let's sorry that for that renaming the issue but yeah now what what we have to do next is basically we just need to register this client locally so just add a branch and then get the local username get user unique id pass in the self because we are doing this in the player controller itself if this is true
true, then what you need to do is you just need to basically register the client. From here, let's drag register NTG client. And in the return value, you can just pass in break and pass the product ID. Now again, if you want, you can make a print string and uh, things like that for here, but uh, we are not do going to do that. So let's move on to the next thing. Now here we will just get a new custom event and call it server received message, uh, client received message. And this should be uh, basically run on owning client message. And from here, just call client received message, pass in the message. And here call get NTG client and call received message from server. Now this function is done. Let's move on to the forward function. On the forward function, what we need to do is we just need to get the game mode. So let's get the game mode and then cast to your game mode. I will cast to the first person game mode that I'm using. BP first person game mode. And then I will just do one thing and that's register message from controller receive message from controller, pass in the controller reference and the message itself. And that should be it. We are done. Let's save all and make a build. So the build is done now on the dev portal. What you need to do is we have to do a little bit of setup. So go to the SDK section and then download the latest SDK. It doesn't matter which one you download. We just need the tools from it and not the SDK itself. Like this SDK download has a few tools. So you go to the SDK folder and then tools on the top, the first folder that it has. And you will find a lot of devot tools and anti-cheat tools. We need the anti-cheat tools for Win64. So let's uh, extract it here. And here it is. So let's go and go to devot tools. So we need this also. And also need this so let's copy these two first copy and let's open up uh, our older folder where is it I copied it right here let's go to windows and paste it here so this is the build that has got completed oh did the file not come let's refresh yeah it's here so next thing what you need to do is you need to go to the uh, settings.json in the easy anti cheat folder and you need to fill it out for your game now this is the game title and info like that and all the settings you already know so I will just quickly forward it and you can fill it up like on the screen it's there. Now this is done let's go to the game services on the dev portal itself and then you will have to go to the anti cheat page that's on the opera under operations now you will see that the client protection is off and the kicks is off and the complete anti cheat is turned off so what you need to do is just scroll down and you will see builds so this builds is upon the operating system so for windows we will have to activate a build so i activated the latest one whatever the latest one was you should also do that now you can see it's active and we need to download this config file so let's save it in the easy anti cheat folder. Oh, sorry, the dev tools folder. Oh no, sorry, sorry, sorry. In the project folder itself, we have to save it. Go to your windows build, right click and copy the name of your uh, exe, whatever it is, and then just save it like that. Uh, your project name dot exe dot eac should be the name like this. Uh, yeah, like this. Now what you need to do next is you need to download two uh, certificates and that you will get from download integrity keys download go to the dev uh, tools folder and save it there now let's go back to the dev tools folder and extract it here itself now delete the folder we don't need it anymore uh, and that that's it like uh, we just need to now generate the files so what you need to do to generate the files is open this folder in command prompt so i will just select the command prompt and and press cmd and it will open up the command prompt here right click and copy the name of this integrity tool dot which is dot exe and run it and then you need to pass a few commands so just to be able to see the commands like you can just write dash dash help and it will give you a complete list of functions that it can do so 
let's call the name of the function again and pass in the product ID and the path of where the file is located. And that's what the base is basically it needs. So let's do that. So I just printed out the name and then I pass in the product ID. Now this product ID is whatever your product ID is. In our case, it's this. So copy and then the path of the file, which is we don't need to call verify. It's uh, called, I think so distinct path or something like that. Let me open up the notepad. Uh, yeah, it's called a uh, target game directory. So copy this and I will give the command whole command in the description. So don't worry about that and pass in your file path. So I will copy my file path and pass it here. And that is it. Just press enter and it will hash your complete uh, folder. So we also need to pass in a few keys, but we will do it after this. So let's first press enter and it is hashing everything. Now let's just pass in the certificate. So th the same command that you wrote after that, just copy this to also that is the in key and uh, the insert and add it before the target PAM. Now, just to give you a, a little bit of heads up, you don't need to do the hashing for the first time. Now open up the easy anti cheat EU setup. Oh, sorry, the settings.json and you have to edit the executable path a little bit. So go, sorry, why did I open it twice? Yeah, go to your uh, engine binaries win64 and then copy the path for the like, sorry, for the path where your exe is located and add here. Now just add two, two dashes here. So basically it doesn't require the e, like uh, path of your executable, but the path of the binary executable that is in your binaries folder. Now double like run the start protected game.exe. It should work properly waiting for game and boom, it worked. So, and you will see like that in like that no other widget is there, like no other screen is there. And on top you can see it says it registered the session successfully. Now let's go to the saved and logs. So you can see the logs and scroll down. And if the entity is not, is not active somewhere here, you will get a, a very clear statement that entity it will not be used in this build. But if it is active, you see, you will see that uh, now the client is not configured because this is a server and like that makes sense. But you can see even this like the anti cheat server did work properly. So that said, um, like this method now works. That's pretty good news for all of us. That said, thanks a lot for watching. Market is copy is coming soon. So if you can support us there, it would be great. But if, if you can't, then consider joining discord or just reaching out to us on discord if you need any help that is it bye guys